Hey everyone, Joe here. I got a nice little tutorial for you today. I'm going to show you how to create HDR images in Lightroom. Now, if you're using an older version of Lightroom, like Lightroom 5, uh, Lightroom 6, which is also Lightroom CC, was just released, and Lightroom 5 does not have built in photo merge for HDR, uh, which also HD. Uh, Lightroom 4 doesn't have HDR also but Lightroom 5 now has a uh, photo merge and HDR now it's not as complex to say as photomatics but it has its uses and uh, so I have a nice little tutorial for you it's a little sunset HDR and the whole purpose of this one is to create a more higher dynamic image uh, range image and not as much as the artistic uh, HDR photos that most people are common uh, seeing and stuff well, I'm going to show you how to create a uh, natural looking HDR image uh, of a sunset that I took actually this afternoon. So let's hop in here and get started. Okay. Now we have these three bracketed photos here. And we'll combine them to create this one. So the first thing we want to do is select them. And simply right click. Go down to, now it says photo merge. That's new. And click HDR and had to give it to uh, create the HDR preview right quick now I do recommend have auto align check it's optional but I also recommend have show deghosting overlay and currently I either recommend you uh, use low deghosting uh, the reason is I've seen some issues with medium and high deghosting that seem to add some uh, noise and uh, in the shadow areas or areas that actually have been deghosted uh, very strongly and so there's still this program is kind of it's in, in beta stages even though it's <laughs> actual release so hopefully Adobe will get this more refined and uh, tuned out over the next couple releases so if, if you're uh, viewing this photo uh, tutorial and, you know, a few months down the road now and you're wondering what I'm talking about uh, like I just mentioned uh, Lightroom 6 is what we're using here was just released you know about three or four days ago so there's still a lot of bugs to be worked out in the program okay let's see if we can't stretch this out here a little bit and take a look at it now you can see with the red areas that's the areas that had the ghosting done and I'm gonna leave it on low I am not gonna check auto tone simply cause well that's what we do in uh, Lightroom itself and just simply click merge and then give it a moment and it's going to create an HDR file for us. Okay, welcome back everyone. That actually took a few moments, so I'm probably sped the video up. Now we see you have one, three, and four here still highlighted. And this number two had just appeared. Now Lightroom seems to put it right after the first file. However, if you want to figure out which one is your HDR, because you'll notice two and three look almost identical. Actually, it's very hard to tell the difference between the two. Number two here, well, actually, you see, it has HDR Tac 2. Well, anytime that a uh, photo merge here in Lightroom, actually, it makes an HDR photo. It adds the uh, extension, you know, not extension really. Just add, appends the HDR, you know, to the end of the file name. So, but this is the one we want. Of course, if you're trying to figure out which one it is. Simply go here and touch and type in HDR. And it looks like <laughs> it is having trouble. Actually, this is still beta. Okay, well, anyway, I'm not going to mess with that. This is our HDR file. Let's go ahead and get started on this. Now, this one you can see doesn't look much different. But what Lightroom is actually doing is what I've been told Lightroom is actually supposed to be doing is adding all that information from those three files into one so you should be able to extend your dynamic range without running into a lot of noise and stuff so that's at least the principle behind it so let's get in here and let's get started editing let's go ahead and click on develop okay now, if you've ever seen any of my other tutorials, you know the first thing I'm going to head down and do is lens corrections. Let's go ahead and click on Remove Chromatic Aberration and turn our profile on. And you can see it picked up my Sigma 18 to 35 art lens, which is fine. Now let's go back up to the top. Now let's do a cropping. 
Now, I cropped this in quite a bit. It's a good thing about having a quality lens. I believe I cropped this in at 16.9 also. So I was able to crop in pretty good here. So I'm about right there. Let's see if I can't pull this in. So I'm be right there. Yeah. That looks about right. Pull this up just a little bit. And let's use our angle tool. Now the angle tool is very nice. We can just run across the top edge of the water line. And let's see. Make sure it gets exactly where I want it think it should be there that looks about right if it isn't we'll adjust it later let's go ahead and click done and there we go okay now to get the cropping done I'm gonna adjust my white balance and if we click on Auto, auto, you see it makes it very blue. I don't want it that blue, but it's very yellow and orange here. I don't, I want to kind of a mix of the two. So I'm going to drop this down a little bit. And I think I'm going to put it down about 3,900 or so. 3,947 should work just fine. I think the original photo was at 3,940, but 3,947, really no difference. I'm going to leave the tent just where it is. Like I said, now what we're trying to do here is make a more realistic looking photo. But I am going to drop the highlights down. Let's bring our shadows up. About right there. Let's bring our white balance up just a little bit. And let's pull our blacks down here. So I'm about around 20, minus 22. Okay. The clarity I'm going to pull up just a little bit here may have to adjust this again here in a few minutes don't want to get too carried away in the vibrance not going to touch saturation however I'll go down here to, you know HSL you know I want to which is you know hue saturation and luminescence click on saturation and click our little tool here. Now what I want to do is I want to kind of click in this area and I want to bring her up just a little bit. About right there. Yeah. So I said you can adjust it here. And if you know what you're doing you can, but I like the little tool because it seems to grab the colors you may not realize were in that particular area and it really brings them out. And that's about where I want that one. Okay, we're not going to touch split toning and we're not going to use tone curve in this one either. Okay, sharpening. Since we cropped in pretty good, I'm going to bring up the sharpening to about 50, but I am not very fond of fake sharpening. And yeah, let's hit our Alt or Option button, depends on what keyboard you're using. And let's mask out a good bit of this. I'm going to keep a lot of the area unmasked out. I'm going to just bring it about 50 because I still want to make a lot of the clouds very you know, easy to see. Now I'm going to pull up luminance here to about 10. But I'm going to bring up color noise reduction to about 50, 51. Just because I've got a lot of you know darker areas and I don't want any color noise in those areas. Okay, now we've got that done. Let's get a gradient filter here. We'll start at the top. Bring it down. You can hit your shift to keep it even. About right there. Now what I want to do with this one is basically I'm just going to add more contrast. And I want to bring up the shadows a little bit too. I think the contrast I brought up here to about 46. And the shadows will bring up about 22. And the reason I brought up the shadows here is because when you bring up the contrast, a lot of this area get darkened down a little bit. So bringing up the shadows kind of helps balance out, but still brings more of the uh, detail out in the image. Now we get done with that one. Click done. 
Now let's grab our circular filter here. Okay, we'll start at the center and bring this out just a little bit. And about right there should work good. Now make sure we have invert mask checked. That way it only works inside the filter here. If you have uh, unchecked, it works on everything outside the circle. Okay, now let's go down here. We're just going to bring up the contrast a little bit more in this little small area. So these clouds around the sun here are really stick out some more. see that it's starting to look pretty good but it kind of darkened it a little bit so I am going to bring out the uh, exposure just a little bit yeah that'll work it's probably a little bit more than I did the last time but that's enough anyway and let me see if there's anything else oh yes don't want to forget this <laughs> About 50 will work. About 33 about 33%. However, make sure our feather is brought up to 100 here. And then add more yellow in this area. And click done. Okay. Only thing left to do now is just go down here and bring our coast uh, post crop venetting down, say about negative 12, negative 14. I think about negative 14 looks just right to really bounce it out. And that brings everybody's attention to the center of the sun. And that's it for this one. I ain't going to do no more uh, editing this one. I think it's just where I want it. Like I said, the whole purpose was just to bring out more dynamic range with you know Lightroom uh, CC or Lightroom 6, whatever you want to call it. Same program. Uh, photo merge program. And I want to create a realistic looking photo. So... I hope everybody liked this tutorial. If you did, hit the like button down the bottom. If you haven't subscribed yet, please take the time to subscribe. It's free. It's for you. Let's you know when I release new tutorials or new videos. <laughs> and until next time, everyone, well, thank you for watching. <laughs>